Hello, welcome back to the channel and after days of procrastination, I am finally posting my first rehouse video on this channel. For today's vlog, I need to rehouse both my hissing cockroach colony into a custom made bin. Shout out to Sir Tony from Hamsteran ni Tonyong Dodingdaga for putting up with my request. He customizes storage bins for pet enclosures and is also a local hamster breeder. Awesome guy, definitely check out his Facebook page, link in the description. Okay, so this is a 78 liter black bin with a custom acrylic display on the front and double screen mesh on the top to prevent the roaches from escaping. Um, hissing roaches don't actually fly because they don't have wings but they can definitely climb on smooth surface areas okay before moving into the actual rehouse video let's talk a little bit about hissing roaches these roaches are introduced into the exotic pet keeping hobby as both pet and feeders for large animals they are and were discovered in the forest floors of you guessed it Madagascar. They eat of uh, fallen fruits, dry leaves, and rotting wood, which would make them more like the tritivores, meaning they feed off decaying organic matters, um, which make them like a natural recycler um, and are beneficial to the environment. Apparently, in the hobby of keeping these roaches, is that there are a couple of hybrids within the grandpa durina genus but for so long correct me if i'm wrong is that within my colony these ones are what i labeled as the madagascar hissing cockroaches the grandpa durina portentosa and these ones are the tiger hisser black or the grandpa durina grandidieri and for average sizes these roaches can grow up to three inches in length and can actually live from two to five years depending on how you care and feed the roaches so the difference between a male and a female hissing cockroach is that males have a more prominent bumps on their head that resembles a horn and the females have a slightly more um, bumped horn on their head as you can see here and fun fact about these horns is that the males actually use um, their head to like uh, push um, other males or like ram um, it's kind of how goats um, do it they kind of ram their head onto their rivals and they also like hiss towards them male and female hissing cockroaches can actually produce the hissing sound they also use this as a defense mechanism to ward off potential predators or if they feel threatened they produce this hissing sound so for their setup i want to go for a bioactive one so i could add um, ice pod and some springtails on it so they would have a cleaner um, enclosure okay so i've already added the substrate into the enclosure so for the substrate mixture i'll be doing a different video on how I mix and create my own substrate that I use for my roaches and my isopod cultures. Also, I'll be adding these charcoals that would help for the bioactive setup. Um, and these are also good for the springtails that we'll be adding um, later on in the video. I'll also be adding these moss into the substrate and this is going to be like the wet side of the enclosure and i'll be watering this side of the enclosure every time 
um, when I do my weekly maintenance. Don't forget to add your dried wood or your rotting wood. This serves as their hide and also serves as a food source for all the animals that will be housed in this enclosure. I'll also be adding some wood barks for additional hides for the nymphs and the roaches. And finally we'll be adding some dried leaves or leaf litter into the enclosure. This would also act as a hide for the ice pods, um, a food source for all the ice pods, um, the heasers and the springtails. I'll also be throwing in two of this feeding dish that I got up from Shopee. These are a 150 pesos. So this is purposely just for the water crystals and for feeding them dry substance foods. Um, I'll be adding the link down on the description so you could check the store that I got this from. So these are um, bug gels, hydro balls, water balls, um, or orbies, um, however you call them. And I got these online. Um, these are the organic ones. Um, that way you can uh, make sure that your pets are still safe when you do this. And these are ideal um, to hydrate your roaches without the risk of drowning them into your water dish. So the build of this enclosure is actually ideal for my room humidity that is around 70 to 90 percent and it's very humid so by this by having this wide um, and well ventilated top lid i can now add their fruits or their vegetable food um, without the risk of getting mold in such a in such a short um, time after misting the wet side of the enclosure it's time to add the roaches so what i did was um, i created a identical setup for the madagascar hisser and this is probably the most satisfying um, part of the video um, adding the roaches into the enclosure so We'll be adding these isopods. Um, these are Trichorina tomentosa or commonly known as the dwarf whites. Um, so these actually goes well with um, the hissers because um, they stay under the substrate rather than um, staying on uh, the wood barks or the hides where the roaches um, should be staying and these are the perfect um, candidates for this enclosure so next thing next thing that we'll be adding are the springtails so they help um, clean whatever mess the um, hissers um, do in their entire enclosure. Here's how the Madagascar hissers enclosure look like. They're basically the same and if you notice the inconsistency of the audio throughout the video um, that's because I forgot to turn on my mic when I was recording the video and I had to um, record each um, I had to record each audio for each clip that I took when I was recording the video if you're new to the channel I'll be posting more videos on my unusual pets and if you haven't please consider subscribing drop a like and hit the bell icon to get notified on my next videos thanks for watching ciao